Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, Good evening brother. Welcome to our Stations of the Cross for today. What you have uh, there with you are the verses that we are going to be singing in between the stations. So I will do the introduction uh, to the stations right now. And then as we move uh, to the first station, we will sing the first verse. Were you there when the judge condemned my Lord? And then we will keep singing in between the stations, just following uh, the numbers there. They are in accordance or they accord with the stations. And we will sing till, just that way till the 14th station uh, and the conclusion. And so let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during the Stations of the Cross, we try to share with Jesus Christ the hours before his death. On the way to Calvary, he said little that we know of, or that is recorded in the Gospels. But in our tradition of prayer, we imagine what would have gone through in his mind, the experiences he would have had on the way on the, on the cross, and we put all those imaginations into prayer and words and accompany him in his pain. So let us join now as a community and walk with Christ along his path to the crucifixion as we pray the stations of the cross. Were you there when the judge condemned my Lord? Were you there when the judge condemned my Lord? resurrection. 
you will receive the power to do just that. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. can learn from my fall. You also will fall if you try too hard to succeed 
all by yourself. I was so wrapped up in my efforts that I forgot to let my father guide me. I forgot for, for an instant to let him work through me. You are often tempted to take on more than you can do well, or you take on goals that, however worthy they may be, or they must be undertaken for, you take them for inferior reasons. You decide what you want, and then you say to yourself, I am going to achieve this goal, and when I succeed, even God will be impressed. You do not need success to get to my father. If you succeed, it is because of his grace and way. So what you would be holding up as your successes are really his already. My father wants you, not your successes. In all that you undertake, go first to him in prayer and ask what he wants. Then, when you go to work, Open, open up your heart to him and let him work in you and through you. In the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Where you when he saw his Do you tend to avoid your loved ones and they you in times of crisis? Some spend a lifetime shielding their deepest selves from their mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, sons and daughters. In the end, this will fail because your death exposes your weaknesses to your loved ones as nothing in life could. Why wait until death or desperation to meet your loved ones? Share with them your most profound aspirations, joys, fears, and troubles before the opportunities are gone. But no matter how often you open yourselves to them in crisis, it won't be easy. I know. You won't want them to see you at the least, you would want them to see you at the best, just as I wanted Mary to see me. I didn't want her to see me so helpless. For an instant, I was underestimating her and losing sight of my father's grace. Just as he gives you the grace to face lost ones when all hope seems lost, so he gives them the grace to cope not only with your pain, but their pains also. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Where are you?
adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because we adore you, O Christ, we give you the use of world. I felt bad for Simon of Cyrene. He had no way of preparing for what happened to him. He was a farmhand coming in from the fields when the soldiers forced him to carry my cross. I overheard him complain to himself, Why me? Please kneel. Do not blame Simon for, compl for complaining. You would have been saddled, reluctant and bitter too, if you had been in his shoes. You must learn, as Simon did, that much in life is not just and fair. You will be saddled by crosses thrust upon you when you least expect them. When that happens, my father and I will not hold against you your reflexive cry of, why me? But you must move quickly beyond that. You must not spend your life looking for reasons for your crosses. You may never know until you die. Learn this from Simon's plight. My father uses anything and anyone to accomplish salvation. He used Simon so Simon could be like one who, who came in by the will of my father. But that alone doesn't make one holy, because holiness is willing what my father wills, wanting what my father wants, accepting it and embracing it and making it your own. Only you, in the depths of your freedom, can do that. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. You never know when an act of kindness you do will be the last one, the last one a person experiences from you. So you should regard every opportunity for kindness as an act that will last an eternity. Kindness begets kindness. Veronica didn't just happen to be at the right place at the right time. She had spent a lifetime learning to be gentle. My face wasn't the first or the last that she soothed. You too cannot expect to be gentle in a crisis unless you have practiced gentleness so often that it becomes a second nature. Would you have wiped my face? How can you say you would have 
if you have ignored the thousand troubled faces before you that come towards your way every time. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Are you there? This fall shows me for being human as nothing else on my way to Calvary. I had enough strength and presence of mind to avoid it. Why did I fall? I think I was lulled into a momentary lapse. Simon had eased my burden. Veronica had soothed my sweaty face. A breeze had cooled my body. What flashed through my mind was that these fleeting strokes of good love meant I could somehow bypass the rest of the journey before I even recognized it as a temptation I fell. The only time I thought of ease on my way to crucifixion, I smiled because I recognized how deeply I was like other people in being tempted to cheat my father. What a profound lesson for you. Momentary good fortune does not mean the struggle is over. If things are looking rosy, be careful. You may be about to fall harder. Both good and bad are fleeting in this life. They do not count forever. You can count only on my Father. Count on nothing. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Were you there?
Instead of graciously accepting their show of concern, I turned on them with the seemingly harsh words, don't weep for me, weep for yourselves and your children. I was harsh on these women because they were part of a great multitude of curiosity seekers who had turned out to watch an execution. Remember that these women were engaged in a kind of formal religious practice of mourning and lamenting for the dead or condemned. They were weeping for the sake of weeping. They were weeping without really knowing me or my father. I am intolerant of religious practice for its own sake. I detest your religious routines when they are an excuse to avoid your deep personal commitments to me and my father. Sometimes it is better to be silent, to pour out your heart where no one can hear. Go to your room and pray. When you know for whom you weep, then come to Calvary's road and follow me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Where you You may someday fall for a third time and have no strength to get up. You will have to be picked up by others. Don't let that lead you to despair. It does not mean you are less human. Do not let those around you rob you of your dignity when you are on the ground. What good am I to anyone? If you will bear your weakness with love, you are doing wonders for yourself as well as the whole of creation. You are making yourself like me. In this life, you cannot become like me in many things. You cannot have the power I have. You cannot have the knowledge I have. You cannot have the wisdom I have. But you can become like me in the love you show when you are weak Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
station. I am stripped of my clothes. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. To God's by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. When I was stripped of my robes, it hurt because parts of them were plastered to my body with caked blood. But it didn't hurt my ego. By this time, I had nothing to cling to. I was empty. Please kneel. I want so much for you to know and to live the truth symbolized by the ripping up of my clothes. My human life was an empty of myself so I could be filled by my Father. Your life must be the same. Clothes are very personal. You would instinctively resist having them ripped from you, yet clothes are part of your outer self and a symbol of it, rather than your spirit. The more you cling to your superficial self, the more you wrap layers of clothing around you that will one day be stripped of. Your clothes or your death will be the end of your ego and all other empires you have been building in your lifetime. If you have died daily to yourself, the stripping off of your humanity and death would not hurt so much. You may, like me, not even clutch to that humanity as your clothes are stripped from you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now. Let me tell you the difference between pain and suffering. Pain is the blind, impersonal clashing of forces that is universal. Suffering is uniquely human. A plant or an animal may be in pain, but there is no suffering. Suffering springs from a mind capable of turning raw pain into agony by asking why. Never under, underestimate the degree of suffering of any of your brothers or sisters. If you look only at their pain, you may wonder what they have to complain about. But you cannot see their suffering. You don't know how sensitive their souls are, how quickly their pain can become insufferable agony. Instead of judging, do all you can to relieve both pain and suffering. That is why you too must never underestimate the power of my suffering. 
No one sustained more pain than I did. But pain was not the issue. Suffering was. My suffering was infinite because my capacity to ask why was infinite and my love for you was infinite. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Where you Please let us take a moment and contemplate Christ crucified. Some of you may think, I said, why, Father, only to fulfill an Old Testament passage? But I said it because I felt it. I was lost. I was in despair, even if I didn't stay in despair for long. This was not pretending. How could it be? Could I, could I have lived and died as a man without experiencing despair and doubt? If someone tells you that faith and hope will keep you from experiencing doubt and despair, do not listen to them. Faith and hope are opposite sides of doubt and despair. They are not as different as most people think. You pass through doubt and despair, not around them. When you are falling into hell, do what I did. Shout your anguish directly to my father. Complain to him to your last breath, as I did. Your complaint will become a prayer, even as mine became a prayer. And he will hear and answer you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Where you
the 13th station. I am taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The God of Christ, the Holy Cross, you have redeemed the world. The noise has stopped. Mary and a few faithful disciples take me from the cross. They say nothing. may have been taught that being my disciples is an active role. The more you do to improve yourself, the church, and the world, the better. There are times when you must work, but there are even more crucial times when you must stay and say nothing. Do nothing except to be with me, your heart aching as Mary and the faithful disciples after the crucifixion. I have asked some of my apostles to be with me during my agony in the garden, but they were so depleted from talking, walking, planning, and worrying that they quickly fell asleep. Not even one of them had the energy left with them to be with me. How often that has happened through the centuries. After my crucifixion, my disciples waited and watched in silence. Some were closer to me than before. But do, you, do, you have to, do I have to die to get you to listen and to love in silence? Glory to the Father. Peter's boat to preach from. I borrowed a donkey to ride on when I came to Jerusalem. I borrowed bread and wine to make my body move and my blood flow in history. I borrowed horns. I borrowed wood and nails to redeem the universe. Why should my burial be any different? I will go on borrowing things until the end of time, until I have borrowed them all and made them holy. I will also borrow you. You will be my tongue and my throat parched. You will be my hands and my feet nailed. You will be my hand thorned, my head thorned. You will be my side lanced. You will be my body stripped. You will be my corpse buried. And when the borrowing is over, you will be my brothers and sisters risen. 
Glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. My life was not complete until I crowned it by my death. Your way is not complete until you crown it by your life. Accept each moment as it comes to you with faith and trust that all that happens has my mark on it. A simple fiat, yes, this is all it takes. A breathing in your heart, I will do it, Lord. So seek me not in far off places, I am close at hand, your work bench, your office, kitchen, these are altars where you offer your love, and I am with you there. So, dear friends, go now, take up your cross and with your life, complete your way. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.